I'll be honest, obviously this is a video I should have recorded last night, but I didn't want to last night. I was quite frustrated, I was quite upset. Um, after what went down in last night's game, I was just kind of over it, do you know what I'm saying? I was kind of over it, I decided, you know, let me get off Twitter, let me, you know, relax, chill, have some time to myself and I'll come back tomorrow, wait to see what comes out in the press overnight. Um, and and ultimately, I know ultimately I'm not impressed with what has come out in the press, but we'll get to that a bit later. Manchester United, we lost three two to Leipzig. We are out of the Champions League. I believe now we are in the Europa League. We're playing Thursday night football now. Thursday night football again, second year in a row. Like Arsenal. Terrible game. Terrible performance from us. It should have never been 3-2, you know. It should have never been 3-2. It, it, it was just, ah, we played so bad. We are so rubbish. We are so, so rubbish. We are so rubbish. Poor performance. We go into the game with a tactical setup where we are playing three centre-halves, two CDMs, and two wing-backs. And we can see two goals right off the bat. Just, just poor. Just poor. I, I don't understand the 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 choice of you know system. Um, and it's obvious that the players didn't understand it either, because if you if you were watching the defending, it was a shambles. It's 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 absolute basic defensive stuff, right? You have Aaron Wambasaka who. Like he showed against Brighton, he, he doesn't know how to mark the back post. And what's more concerning to me is that I'm not a tactician. I'm not a tactician. You're not a tactician. But we can still identify the fact that there's clearly issues with Aaron wan marking the back post. So why can't the coaching staff do it? Hmm. Interesting. Or maybe a coaching staff have identified that, but they can't do anything about it. Because, like you saw yesterday, Aaron Rambasaka is drawn to Lindelof's man. He's trying to cover Lindelof's man. Why is he trying to cover Lindelof's man? Because Lindelof's too slow. Why do we always why did we always see Luke Shaw trying to cover Harry Maguire's man? Because Harry Maguire's too slow. Why do we have to play two CDMs? Because our centre backs, plastic, plastic defenders, awful, really. Ah, uh, it's just the, we can't defend. I, I, I don't understand it. I, in recent weeks, have had concerns about going forward, us getting goals. Right, we rely too much on individualism. We rely too much on Bruno saving us. We rely too much on Rashford saving us with a goal. You know, there's no system, there's no style of play that, you know, is a way of almost guaranteeing that we are scoring goals. But that doesn't matter if we can't defend. You know, people will cry about the Glazers, oh, we didn't bring in Jaden Sancho in the summer. Ah, uh, Edward, we didn't bring in Jaden Sancho. Jaden Sancho doesn't change the result. Jaden Sancho doesn't stop us from losing against uh, Istanbul Bashakshikshe. It doesn't change that. We can't defend. I... I I don't understand how we are still in a position where we are constantly complaining about our defence and we don't have defensive improvements. We've been having problems with our defence since Jose. Since even before. that we've we, <laughs> Jose wanted to bring in defenders. Now, don't get me wrong. Jose wanted to bring in Harry Maguire. He didn't get him. And Harry Maguire is not someone that I, 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 I've ever wanted at the club, if I'm being honest. Yeah, after his World Cup, you know, performance, you know, everybody thought it'd be a great signing. Um, and look, you can't blame Harry Maguire. He's he, he's not, you know, he can't control the fact that he was worth 80 mil, but 80 mil for Harry Maguire. And the captain's armband. He's not a captain. He's not a captain. He's not a leader. He's honestly not a captain. He's not a leader. Do you know what I'm saying? I, 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 I don't see him like, on the pitch, being, like, vocal to the people making mistakes. Do you know what I'm saying? Paul Scholes on the BT broadcast yesterday was saying, if I'm Harry Maguire, I'm putting Paul Pogba to the side and telling him, get your agent to shut up or sack him. Brother, do you think Harry Maguire could do that? 
Harry Maguire's not doing that, man. Harry Maguire's not doing that. The dressing room is a shambles. It's a shambles. The dressing room is a joke. I know the dressing room is a joke because apparently it's come out tonight or during the day today that the players, the players are, are, believe De Gea is to blame and that, you know, Dean Henderson should get a chance. I beg your pardon. De Gea is to blame for what? If you're talking about the third goal, Harry Maguire is allergic to clearing balls that come to the near post. Why does Harry Maguire never clear balls that come to the near post? I feel like every single game, I feel like every single game we play, a ball will come to the near post that Harry Maguire could have cleared and he just doesn't. Why doesn't he want to clear the ball? Why does he leave it for De Gea? And fair enough, yeah, De Gea should have probably got to that, right? But it's no communication. They, they are, commu- they're not talking to each other. They are not, at, at a Sunday league level, at a secondary school football level, if any goalkeeper is in that position with their centre-back, they're screaming, keepers ball, keepers ball. Why can't they do that? Why can't they here just scream keepers ball? Why can't they communicate with each other like you're supposed to do on a football pitch? Why is our defence in absolute tatters? I'm not, I'm not one of those fans who wants Pochettino. I'll be honest, I'm not. I'm not one of those fans who's going to shout Ole out. I've said many times, Ole doesn't do himself any flav- favours. He, he doesn't act like someone who wants to be in a job. He doesn't make decisions that somebody who wants to be in a Manchester United manager would make. In my eyes. But I've never been one to say, Ole out, get him out. I'm starting to lean in that direction because he's he, he's out of his depth. He's not, he, he he's shown so many times now that he's just not a quality enough manager. He's just not good enough. He's not when it comes to decision making as a manager. He's not got what it takes. And, and I'll be honest, the main reason why I've never wanted to say Ole out is not because of oh, my trust in Ole, because it doesn't make a difference. It's not going to make a difference, regardless of who we bring in at this moment in time. I don't think it makes a difference. I don't know what manager's available that changed our situation. I'm not a fan of Poch. Poch didn't win anything with Tottenham. What makes you think he's going to... The only thing I like about Poch is that he has a system and philosophy that he brings in. And to be fair, that is something we need. We need some sort of a system. We need a philosophy. Because right now, we go out and we play a different system against every team. We beat Leipzig. Playing four and two and two narrow. Why are we coming out and playing five at the back with two CDMs? Why? Ooh. Key players had bad games for us today. Rashford had a bad game. Rashford had a bad game. Greenwood should have put away some of his chances, but Greenwood in the second half was one of our only sparks. He was one of our only positives. I don't know, man. I, I, I thought Matic was playing well in the second half. Matic was crap in the first half, but I thought he started playing well in the second half. Of course, Ole subs him out. Luke Shaw wasn't fit enough to play the whole game, but at the start of the second half, he subs out Tellez instead of Luke Shaw, and then he has to sub out Luke Shaw for Brandon Williams, who is a right-footed left-back. Oh, man. I, I just... Oh my god, I, in all of this, I've completely forgotten about Paul Pogba. <laughs> well done, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, you have just made yourself look like a mug. After what happened yesterday, or the day before, sorry, he didn't start Pogba, which was the right decision. You don't, you don't, you don't let a player who's just undermined you completely play for you. You don't, you don't do that. No top manager does that. Pep wouldn't have played Pogba yesterday. Klopp wouldn't have played Pogba yesterday. Fergie wouldn't have played Pogba yesterday. Jose wouldn't have played Pogba yesterday. You don't play a player that's just completely undermined you. But no, Ole gets desperate. He gets desperate. 
he 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 starts wetting his pants. He gets desperate. Let's get Pogba in. Let's get Pogba in. Embarrassing. I'll be honest. I, I when we scored the two goals, I got excited because I thought to myself, you know, it, we we can all we need is the one goal. We don't need to win this match. We just need to draw. We just need one more goal, and and we can make it through. And and although I'll still be very frustrated, at least we're through. But ultimately, it doesn't matter. I don't. I don't. Ah, it, uh, it's just. It does hurt, man. It does hurt. It does hurt. We're playing Thursday night football now. We're playing Thursday night football. The funny thing is, is that we're probably going to go out against Man City and beat them because whenever Ole's job's in trouble, the players go out and play for him because the players like him. The players clearly like Ole, probably because life is easy under Ole. He probably he's, he, Ole's uh, clearly an easygoing guy. Life's easy under Ole, so they don't have a problem. You know, they'll play for him. They want to keep him because he makes their jobs easier. He makes their lives easier. But we're not going to be winners with Ole. Like, <sighs> we're going to beat Man City, most likely. I can see it. And if we don't, then the shitstorm continues and, and maybe that's what we need. But as a Manchester United fan right now, I'm not happy. I'm not happy with the team. I don't know how anybody can be happy. We're, we're, we're not good enough. That's the reality. We're not good enough. That our performances are up and down, and and that's what you're gonna get when you have a system that is constantly changing week to week, day to day. You know, when you have players like Paul Pogba, who who only care about themselves, and 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 the thing is, the thing is, I don't blame Pogba for wanting to leave. I don't have a problem with Pogba wanting to leave. I said it to my cousin Mark on the Twitter. I don't have a problem with Pogba wanting to leave. Right? In my eyes, if Pogba has any ambition as a footballer, he will want to leave. Do you know what I'm saying? If Pogba was to wait out the rest of his contract and uh, and 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 sign for free, I'd think he's a mercenary. In, in, the way things are going, if the club is extending Ole and Pogba signs an extension and gets a lot of money, he's probably a mercenary. Do you know what I'm saying? If he has any sort of ambition, he will most likely want to leave. But the manner in which you go about it is what is wrong, and he's gone about it wrong, and it's embarrassing. I don't know, man. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. It's hard. It's hard to watch Man United games anymore, man. Because when when we have highs, you want to get excited. You want to be happy. But you just know that it's not it's not going to last. You, you know it's not going to last. And, you know, if we beat Man City, I'll be over the moon. Especially if we have a great performance. But ultimately, it's just embarrassing. It is just embarrassing. Look, let me know what you guys thought of the game against Leipzig. Let me know what you guys think about Ole Gunnar Solskjaer as a manager. Um... I'll see you guys all later.